All right, we'll get started. So, chapter nine. We're starting to talk about chapter nine. Um, the basic idea behind chapter nine is we've learned about what so far? Moles, right? We've learned about moles. What are moles used for? To review. Counting, right? Counting the number of something. So we've used moles, but then what did we learn in the chapter after that, our more recent chapter? Reactions, right? It was all about reactions. So we spent time talking about how do we count number of atoms, count number of things, convert from mass to the number of things, and we spent the next chapter talking about reactions. What are the different types of reactions? How do we know if they occur? Now we're going to do this. We're going to bring them together and it's going to create something called stoichiometry, which literally just means to count, right? Counting. So now we're going to ask questions like, if I had like four grams of nitrogen and I had four grams of hydrogen and those two reacted together, how many grams of NH3 would I get? This is the kind of question that we're going to be interested in answering. Now we're not there yet, right? We have a long ways to go. Because there's a lot of factors going on here. The first factor is how many, does, does this number, four grams and four grams, mean anything to us at all? No, it's a mass, right? Remember, it's like taking trucks and trailers. What if I said you had 4,000 pounds of truck and 4,000 pounds of trailer? How many pairs do you have? You don't know, because you need to know how many you have, right? So remember, that's why we learned moles. Then we're gonna say, if I know how many of these I have, and I know how many of these I have, how many do I pair? Right, trucks and trailers, it's one truck and one trailer. But chemist chemistry isn't always that simple, right? It's not always a one-to-one -one ratio. It might be different ratios. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a chemical reaction that I've already balanced for you, okay? And it's this actual reaction right here. And we've actually looked at this one in class too. So if you looked at this reaction, which was we called the Haber process, um, is it balanced? No, it's not, right? So I have two N's, I need two N's. Now I have six H's, so I do that to get six H's. What does this mean, this balanced reaction that we spent all this time worrying about? It means that if I have one N2 and three H2's, I will get two NH3's. You guys understand? Now, where we're going with this is, what if I have three N2s and three H2s? How many NH3s would I make? Still only two, because I would run out of these, right? So that's kind of where we're gonna go with this, and that's the idea behind answering a question like this. But the very first and most basic thing we need to do is figure out what ratio we have. So if I just gave you one, like let's just say I had one N2, how many NH3s would you make? If you had one and two, how many NH3s would you make? Two. Two. What if I had two and twos? Two and twos, how many NH3s would I make? Two. No, if I had two and twos, I could make, assuming I had enough of this. Let's, let's do that again, right? Okay. Assuming I have enough of this, if I have two and twos, how many NH3s would I make? Four. Four. How are you doing that? You're using a mole ratio. So you're saying, well, I have two moles of N2. What goes on the bottom? Remember this whole step? What goes on the bottom? Moles of N2. What goes on top? Moles of NH3 is so what we're converting into, right? And then where do I get these numbers from? Those are the coefficients. The coefficients are the ratio between those two, right? So I would put one here and two here. This is called 
like the name of this term right here is called a mole ratio. Make sense? That's what it's called, a mole ratio. So the first question in front of you says write all possible mole ratios for the following chemical equation. So for this chemical equation, what mole ratios can we write? Well, I wrote one, right? <laughs> Two moles of NH3 to one mole of N2. What else could I do? The easiest thing. I could just take this and do what to it? Flip it over. Now, what else could I write? Uh, with uh, H2. Very good, H2. So what can I put on top? Let's do three moles on top of H2. What goes on the bottom? One mole of NH3, I mean, sorry, two. Two moles of NH3, right? What can I do to that now? Flip it over. This is a harder one for people to see sometimes, but what else could I do? The ratio of Absolutely, I can do a ratio between these two, couldn't I? Now, when I'm doing a ratio between these two, what am I saying? This is a really useful number, by the way. If I get a ratio between these two, what I'm asking, now the question that I'm answering is, if I have one mole of N2, how many moles of H2 do I need? to use it up. Do you understand? That's the question this answers. If I have one mole of N2, how many moles of H2 do I need to use it up? And what would the answer be? Three. If I have one mole of N2, I need three moles of H2, and I will make two moles of NH3, right? So this will say how many do I need to react to the other one. So let's put that number up here. And what would it be on top? One mole of N2, right? What goes on the bottom? Three moles of H2. Three moles of H2. Or flip it. That is the mole ratio. Got it? So now. This is what we're going to use if we ever, what have we been converting so far? Just from atoms to moles to grams, all those conversions, but it's always been the same element. If we want to change elements in a chemical reaction, like go from N to H, NH3, or like, which by the way is really useful, we're going to always use a mole ratio. That's how we change between elements in a reaction. So you guys try number two real quick. 